Welcome, welcome, fam. Thank you so much for coming back to our Money Con Ganas podcast. We are super excited for part two of our series of getting to know the Money Con Ganas hosts. Thank you so much to Martin for being willing to be our first profile episode. We learned a whole lot about Martin, including that he's going to have a good time being front row in the upcoming Bad Bunny concert. So shout out to Bad Bunny and to all the community <laughs> that's going to be out there perreando, doing their thing. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> Today we have our magnificent and magical Francisco Millan. This man is a man that the streets know him by many different names that shall not be repeated in this space or else they will find out who he is. But today we're super excited to be here with him and we're going to get right into our questions. Just as a reminder, we have questions that were submitted by the community that each of us is going to be answering in this profile series. So without further ado, I'm going to pass the mic over to Brother Martin with the first question for uh, Francisco today. Yeah, so Francisco, um, can you share a little bit about your background, your upbringing, um, kind of where you come from in life and any up um, any inspiration for kind of getting into the finance world, investing world, money con ganas? Yeah, so uh, Francisco Millan, um, I grew up in Los Angeles in Pico Union District, so grew up in the inner city and came up to Berkeley where we're currently at for undergraduate. Um, in terms of professional career, I've been, or I used to do, um, finance until a couple of months ago actually. So uh, most of my career was as a financial analyst, financial planning analyst. So for me, personal finance is something that I found interesting since, you know, I was like, I don't know, probably high school to like the, the first couple of years of college. like. I think that's when I first started really trying to understand what it all meant and like why I hadn't learned about it. <laughs> so that was like my trajectory. And then until recently, um, I kind of switched out of uh, finance and doing more of like, I don't know, like public work, um, doing a lot of um, relief efforts in terms of like everything that's going on with COVID. So it's a complete different field, um, program management. So it's a lot different, um, a lot more fulfilling um, for me. And I think that was one of the things that being in the space made me reflect a lot in terms of like what I wanted to do because I could do the personal finance stuff outside of just work. So I wanted to do something different, something that had a, a bigger impact in terms of like the people I work with, the the kind of life I was leading in terms of professionalism. So that's that's kind of where I'm at. Um, definitely changed careers and very excited. Um, it's been going very well and I'm still able to do this uh, Money Con Ganas project. We're still able to, to kind of be in the same field. Um, thank you. Um, but with, with that, would you just share, if anything, right, about the, the whole Money Con Ganas? Like what drove you? to to join the team what what got you um you know started into like wanting to go into the personal finance aspect or like just even sharing stories and things like that yeah so the way i started learning about money con ganas and like being part of money con ganas was due to the fact that i'm very passionate about helping people understand personal finance and helping them learn be able to manage and really take ownership of everything that revolves around their life and money is a big part of it i mean we we don't talk about it as much money is very hidden but money is a pivotal part of our society pivotal part of our lives like we're always either talking about money or dealing with money whether it's we don't have money or we have money like it's always there so um, I started just like a Instagram page called Let's Talk Dollars because I just thought it was like important for me to to try to reach out to other people. And through that vehicle was when I was approached by, by you guys. And this whole idea of money con ganas was just resonating with me because I felt that it was something that could be even more impactful. Right. I was trying to do work and I was doing it on my own. And I was like, oh, well, if I work with three other individuals who are also passionate about helping our communities, but also informing them, also learning together and experiencing this together. I thought it was um, just a, a better way to go about it. So 
that's pretty much how like money con ganas and me participating in the space um, kind of evolved. So I think uh, you're you're moving us in a really beautiful direction with some of the offerings uh, that are coming up a, a, in your answers, Francisco. And I think what would be really beautiful to to learn from you today is what are some of the what are some of the values that you've developed over time, lessons that you've developed over time, politics that you've developed over time that shape your relationship with money and the way that you move in the context of money itself? What comes up for you when you're invited to reflect on values, politics, lessons? Yeah, for me, I think one of the biggest lessons is that money is something that we can all understand. And it's something that doesn't have to be this foreign thing in terms of, oh, only certain people manage money or deal with money or have wealth. And even if you don't have a lot of money, there's things you can do to make sure that you're doing things now for your future self. And I feel that's important for everyone to be able to at least learn about it and be able to take that knowledge to not only yourself, but people around you. So for me, I think that's the biggest lesson where you don't need to be this like financial guru or like money manager to be able to be in charge of like your finances, to be able to be in a position of, I'm going to generate wealth for my family so that we're okay, so that if social security isn't there when I retire, I'll be okay. Because these are all these things that a lot of people probably think about but until you have an action or a plan in place and take some action, you're not going to really be prepared for when that time comes. And it's better to prepare now, to do these things now. And it's not so difficult as a lot of people think. So I think it's just that's the biggest lesson. It's like you can learn this. You can take ownership of creating a retirement account, of funding it, of being in charge of that. And it's OK if your career is something else like a lot of it is more passive, like my retirement accounts, I check them, I don't know, like every month or every quarter. I think in the last couple of months, people have been worried about like, oh, the stock market has been correcting. I don't know what my 401k looks like because it doesn't matter because that's like decades away for me to even think about. So that mindset of like not worrying about these things that don't really impact you now because your goal is in place, you've set up parameters that you're gonna follow and have conviction that this is the path I want to take and this is the actions that I'm going to do in order to set up myself financially for my future self. That's a great answer to that question. Um, along that same vein, what would you say are some lessons that you've learned um, in your personal finance journey, whether that is you know, just investing, education, information? What's something that you would like to share with folks regarding your own journey? Yeah, one of the biggest lessons is um, learning to trust yourself with mm. what you're doing, what you're learning. I think people put too much weight and value on other people's opinions in terms of like what to do, how to do it. But ultimately, if you are confident and you've done the research and you feel that path is right, then you're going to be OK, because personal finance is that it's very personal like what works really well for me what i feel is like great and it's an approach that fits my lifestyle may not work for someone who works the same job as me and who has gone to the same school as me that's how unique everyone's situation is so i think trusting yourself that you've done the research and that you are going to stick it out in terms of like what you are very much aligned with I think that goes a long way. So I think that lesson I wish I would have learned even at a younger age when I was like still here at, at UC Berkeley and, and trying to understand like, oh yeah, I do have student loans. I do have a career that I want in place, but like, how do I get there? What do I do? And a lot of it is, a lot of us already like believe in ourselves. We kind of are willing to bet on ourselves, right? Like we bet on ourselves that we're gonna be able to do our careers, that we're gonna be able to grow. And with money is the same thing. You have to have that conviction. And I, I think that's really important. Um, just going back to one of the areas that you just touched on, uh, that is, uh, you know, having loans and things like that. Is there something that w along the way you created for yourself 
to let's say did, did you have loans for example did you do you currently have loans what is the the path that you took in order for for you to to get to where you're at at this point yeah so for me i did have student loans so when i graduated um i i was at uc berkeley for for five years and i was able to study abroad and i was able to do a semester in dc but i also racked up student loans while i was here to to cover a lot of my education and experiences so I remember my first job out of college. I wasn't making that much money and I had these bills coming up, right? Like these loan payments. And I was like, I don't want to worry about these things. I don't want to like, I don't know, have this in the back of my mind for 10, 15, 20 years, depending on like how long it goes. So I started formulating a plan of like, what am I going to do to get rid of debt? Mm -hmm. So for me, it was all right, I'm not gonna keep adding debt, I'm not gonna keep increasing my lifestyle, et cetera, and really focus on paying that down. So luckily for me, like now I'm, I'm debt free, so I haven't had debt, I don't know, in like two or three years. And that was, the last thing I paid off was my student loans. And that was like a big sigh of relief because it is something that sometimes people do have to carry um, with them for a long time. And I didn't want that. So yeah, I built the plan. I've it was something that I felt I needed to do just to have that peace of mind. And I think it's worked out for like my benefit in terms of like what I can do and like how I approach life, how I approach career opportunities, how I approach different things. And it's by not having that stress. And I know I'm in a very like privileged position. I've had a lot of luck along the way. Um, hard work is part of it, but there's also luck in a lot of the things that we do. So. I feel that because of that, I'm in a position that hopefully others are able to get into and hopefully this space and this medium allows them to get the tools and then really formulate a plan and, and take action to, to be able to do these things. Yeah, Francisco, I think something that um, that I've appreciated uh, learning from you over the years, and I think uh, in one of our, in our, our recent episodes, you you mentioned that that I was looking forward to to making space for it when we were going to do your your episode specifically is I was really moved when you share I think it was with um with it was one of the guest episodes that you reference what is the experience of being in the context of a family and how you've learned and developed so many skills in this world of like personal finance and money and strategies in this arena and and what is it what does it mean to bring some of that into practice and want to offer that to your to your own blood family your parents your siblings and their responsiveness their openness sometimes you're the younger sibling sometimes you're the older sibling sometimes you're the middle sibling but but having your own experience with money and then w doing better and wanting that for your family isn't always the easiest thing to do. And I know that you've had some experiences in that. What's something that you would be willing to share with folks in this community space of some of the lessons of bringing this wisdom into our families, the healthy, the not healthy, the, the words of wisdom that will be helpful for folks who are also in that journey or would want to start that journey? Yeah, that's a very <laughs> loaded question, right? Um, I don't think I've had as many deep financial conversations with family members as I would like, mm. because my experience has been that people are not gonna take action until they're ready to. And you could provide all this information, you could give them everything to, to start, but until they internalize the need, the reason why, like I think the why is like super important. Why are you trying to do this this year why are you trying to get out of debt why what do you want out of the next 10 years of your life right and i think until a person really kind of decides that for themselves you can't really push a lot of these things in their life because this isn't just like oh i have money let me pay off debt no it's like do i need to stay in this job that i don't like to be able to pay these bills do i do i have the energy to think about the debt that I have after working 50 hours on my feet, 60 hours, whatever it may be, right? So for me, it's like, I want people to know what I've done, the approaches I've taken, 
and always be open to, oh, do you have questions? Do you want to follow up? And have them take that step, right? Take that initial step of like, I want to do this. I see that you've done it. And I'm by no means like this special person with personal finance, right? Like this is done by like millions of people all the time. So I just want to know or show them like, oh, this is what I did. This is possible. And then have them approach. So that has been my approach. It's like I want to lead by example and just be a resource available without being that person that's always talking about this. Right. And that is difficult to do because sometimes I'm like, yeah, like I want to help and I do want to do these things and I do want to show you like you can do these or just take this step. And it may be easy for me, but I know for someone it might be a very daunting challenge, right, to think about these things and to really focus their energy on something that they may have put off like for 15, 20 years, right? It's like some people, I don't know, they may have never looked at their finances. They just they know they get a paycheck and they have bills but they haven't had a plan they haven't looked at things in a very detailed manner and for me it's like well i'm here i'm a resource and then have those conversations and i've had those conversations just not as many as i would like um yeah, that's beautiful <laughs> and um what what is something that um something personal that you would like to share with the Money Con Ganas community um, that you would like them to know about you? Um, I think Ruben alluded to this earlier. So I got everyone in different groups of circles uh, that I know. I have nicknames from like all of them and they're all different nicknames. So uh, that's one thing where I get called by my last name, by Junior, by um, Cisco, etc. So that's one thing it does feel like multiple people but it's just one person so <laughs> uh i don't know it's not the name in the streets as ruben mentioned but it is something that is um i didn't know was as unique as it was uh the other one is um i'm the youngest of four so um i am the youngest one but i do feel like sometimes that doesn't really translate in terms of like the things that i'm doing or the way i approach a lot of these conversations Last thing but not least, um, movie, music artist, and food. Which one is that your favorite? Uh, so food, uh, sushi, all day, every day. I probably have mercury poisoning by now, but <laughs> hey, <laughs> it's all right. Um, movie, I just watched this recently, and it's, I don't think it's satire as much as it's like a documentary, is Don't Look Up. That oh, movie yeah. was just... <laughs> It was too real where the point I was like so frustrated because it felt like real life experience. So if you haven't seen that, highly suggested. I was frustrated watching it the whole time just because I'm like, oh yeah, this is what current society looks like in um, microcosm of a film. So yeah, that was an interesting film. And music, um, I would say currently probably J. Cole because his last album, I've probably played it a lot. Um, so probably, um, yeah, could probably J. Cole, um, and then, you know, some banda of Spanish music and all whatnot, so. <laughs> hey. Well, thank you so much. Um, and I just wanted to say thank you to our audience. Thank you, everybody, for uh, tuning in. Um, but we want to also give a special shout out and thank you to the Ethnic Studies uh, Changemaker Podcast Studio um for hosting us and having us um being able to film and record in, in their studio um and of course thank you to francisco for being willing to open up and share um his thoughts um his experiences with us um in this podcast so thank you <laughs>